This is the start of a, uh, one of my favourite walks, a five mile walk, starting off in uh, Low Bradfield and heading up towards uh, Dale Dyke and Strines Reservoir. And uh, this is the starting point on a beautiful day. Yesterday was uh, the warmest day of the year and uh, up to now anyway. And today is gonna be pretty much the same. It's uh, Easter weekend. It's uh, Easter Sunday tomorrow, and uh, so we take advantage of the weather and uh, do this uh, walk around uh, Dale Dyke and then uh, Strines Reservoir. Very popular spot in the uh, Low Bradfield for bringing the kids to feed the ducks. Probably some of the uh, most well fed ducks. In Britain, these the number of people that turn up here with the children feeding the ducks very popular. That is the uh, old chapel, which I think now is uh, not sure whether it's still a chapel or been turned into a home. At the side of it is the old uh, filter works, and uh, that's now been turned into uh, properties three, four, five bedroom departments. It's been a long ongoing project and uh, still that ongoing. Speaks for itself, it's the Plough Inn, a popular pub, it does some nice meals. And uh, I guess this weekend being the bank holiday weekend, that's gonna get rather busy. This is uh, a part of the walk, the, uh, the uh, river coming out of uh, Dale Dyke and flowing down there, down into uh, eventually Dam Flask and uh, down the Loxley Valley. And uh, that's a little bridge that dates back to uh, God knows when, very narrow road. Recently been closed for uh, repair, refurbishment. That's Dale Dyke in the bottom down there. And uh, we've just entered the uh, wooded section. So uh, we'll go for a few hundred meters, a couple of hundred meters into the shady wood. And the woods and uh, this is a short trek now across a couple of fields drop down to the neck end of the dam up in the distance can just see we'll get a better view of it soon I think boots folly on the top of the hill there Dale Dyke is the dam that caused the uh, great flood of Sheffield in uh, 1864 with a loss of I think it was 240 250 lives and uh, destroyed over a thousand properties along the way and uh, there are plaques on the other side of the dam to uh, give you a bit more information on uh, the great Sheffield flood nice and clear I don't see any fish never have done but uh, we'll continue up this path through the wood up to the Strines Reservoir. This now is the uh, Strines Reservoir dam wall and it uh, looks like there is still water coming over the overflow on the other side there uh, but we've got a steady uh, climb up here up to uh, what was the dam keeper's uh, house it's now uh, property to let and uh, this will be the last of the uh, climbs that we have to do but uh, as I say, it is a steady so one. we finally made it to the top, and that is Strines Reservoir. 
with uh, Rooks Folly over in the distance, looking down on the reservoir. And uh, if you Google that, there's some quite interesting history associated with Rooks Folly and Charles Boot. <laughs> the dam keepers cottages as I said earlier this is uh, now accommodation holiday let and uh, apparently it's quite uh, booked up owned by the local uh, Hague family but uh, they rent them rent them out and uh, with weather like this Easter weekend you can't go wrong the thing that interests me with uh, Boots Folly, as I say, built in 1927 by Charles Boot, who went on to be uh, to establish Pinewood Studios. And uh, it often makes me wonder, as we are surrounded here by uh, pine woods, is this where he got his name from? Is this where he got the inspiration from to call it Pinewood Studios? This is probably the highest point that uh, we uh, we reach above Dale Dyke Dam, looking down on it down there and uh, out towards High Bradfield over in the distance uh, that's the dam wall you can see down at the bottom there that uh, that gave in uh, 1864 we're going to carry on this trail here now and uh, pass some uh, absolute fabulous houses that uh, you can't really see from the uh, from the main road up the top there this is the house that we're coming up to. I think this one is uh, certainly one of the nicest along here. As I say, you can't see it from the uh, from the road, main road, but uh, here it is off road. Quite who lives there, as I say, I don't know. Looks like it was stables at one time. The stables have been made into. Uh, extending the accommodation. I was told that uh, the house, which is now behind me, was uh, was owned by, or he lived there, a guy that built Meadow Hall, Paul Sykes. How true that is, I don't know. Uh, I don't think he lives there now. I think he moved further into uh, North Yorkshire, but uh, I was told that's where he once, once lived and uh, who can blame him what a fabulous place that is this is the point where uh, we uh, we leave the public footpath or leave the public footpath above the uh, the dam the dale dyke dam and uh, we head up up here that's the uh, local farmhouse and the uh, the footpath continues up here up to the road and uh, then it's tarmac all the way back to the car, back to Low Bradfield, which are here. And they come to say hello. This is, uh, it's now a house, but it once was, you can probably see with the black sign just there, it was a pub. 
it was the hay chatters and uh, it's a place that uh, me and a few friends from school we used to come to underage and uh, have a couple of beers in there out of sight out of mind nobody really bothered you and uh, one thing I distinctly remember about the place is the uh, uh, the jukebox which if I remember rightly on the jukebox it was uh, four for a florin and this leads us back nicely to the uh, car park at Low Bradfield in front of the uh, the cricket pitch and uh, we've covered uh, 5.2 miles over that distance and uh, you can see that uh, bank holiday weekend the uh, the car park will now be full and people parking all over the roads as they uh, head out this way from probably from the city. 